Why James Webb is Ready to Rewrite Cosmic History The James Webb Telescope is the most potent and expensive space astronomical observation instrument created throughout human history. Their mission will be to discover which stars and galaxies formed at the beginning of the universe, observe the most distant stars' evolution and behavior, and study potentially habitable exoplanets to find out if there is life in them. The James Webb has a launch date of December 22, 2021, and if all is well, it will be the new space telescope that will replace the famous Hubble Space Telescope. This powerful new telescope will study the universe in infrared radiation. But what is infrared radiation? In astronomy, there is something called electromagnetic radiation spectrum, which consists of a scheme where all types of electromagnetic waves that exist are classified. For example, the light we can see is a type of radiation called visible light. There is also another type of radiation that we cannot see but we can feel in the form of heat. This is infrared radiation. There are also radio waves such as Wi-Fi signals emitted by your phone or TV signals, among many others. Humans can only perceive a small portion of all the types of electromagnetic waves that exist with our eyes. The visible light, the rest are invisible to our eyes. The Hubble Space Telescope, the most powerful telescope to date, can only observe in the ultraviolet, visible light and near-infrared ranges, meaning it has a field of vision much like the human eye. However, the most distant and ancient events in the universe, such as the birth of the first stars or the first galaxies, can only be observed in the mid and far infrared spectrum. This is because galaxies move away and the universe expands. For this reason, the light from the farthest bodies stretches and travels towards the red frequencies as they travel through the universe. In astronomy, near-infrared is considered to be infrared waves of infrared radiation that have a wavelength close to those of visible light, i.e. 700 nanometers. In contrast, infrared radiation farthest from visible light is called far-infrared. They have a wavelength up to 1 millimeter. And finally, there is the mid-infrared, whose wavelength ranges from 5 to 28 micrometers. 1 micrometer is equal to 1,000 nanometers. The James Webb Telescope is specialized in the latter, in the mid-infrared. It will see everything that Hubble cannot see. However, the James Webb Telescope is not the first telescope in history to observe in the mid-infrared. Spitzer Telescope In 2003, NASA put the large Spitzer Telescope into operation, which, like the James Webb, could observe the frequencies of signals in the mid-infrared. For 16 long years, this telescope made essential contributions to science, such as it studied comets and asteroids in our solar system, the discovering of a previously unidentified ring around Saturn, the formation of stars and planets, the evolution of galaxies, the composition of interstellar dust, and of course, its best-known work, the detection of seven Earth-sized planets in the TRAPPIST-1 system. In 2020, the spacecraft stopped working permanently, but it left us excellent knowledge of the universe. Although the Spitzer Telescope and the James Webb Telescope have similarities, in reality, they are quite different. Primary Mirror The most significant difference is the primary mirror. The Spitzer Telescope's mirror averages only 8.5 meters in diameter, and it was even smaller than Hubble's primary lens, which measures 2.4 meters. In contrast, the primary lens of the James Webb measures 6.5 meters. It is made of beryllium and covered with a thin layer of gold. This will give it a perfect reflection with which it can capture the light of very faint objects, such as the disks of dust around stars or the cloud of gas on the outskirts of the galaxy. It also represents an unprecedented increase in range, and we will be able to see objects billions of times farther away than Spitzer could see and much smaller than Hubble can see. It will be possible to see the farthest galaxies in the observable universe and study tiny bodies such as exoplanets from near-Earth star systems that are impossible to see with modern telescopes. The Problem with Infrared Observing infrared light waves has always been a feat for astronomers. It represents one of the biggest engineering and technologically challenges they can face, as doing so requires a somewhat tricky condition to achieve. That condition is cold. To observe the infrared radiation from space, the telescope must maintain a shallow temperature below 50K, 
minus 22 degrees Celsius or minus 370 degrees Fahrenheit, which is achieved with refrigerants. However, the planet's atmosphere emits infrared radiation that interferes with observations. So it is impossible to obtain good infrared images of the universe from Earth. The only way is to place a telescope in space. The Hubble telescope that is orbiting the Earth at 550 kilometers high maintains a relatively low temperature thanks to its thermal insulation system that protects it from solar radiation. Yet the heat produced by the telescope itself interferes with infrared observations. The Spitzer telescope maintained a shallow temperature with the help of a panel that blocked sunlight and prevented the instruments from realizing infrared radiation. The James Webb will use a system based on the Spitzer, but instead of a fixed panel, it will use five folding parasols made of a polymide film, an extremely resistant polymer. In addition, the parasols will be coated with aluminum membranes on the side that will point to the sun and with silicone on the opposite side. To ensure that the parasols of the telescope are always facing the same direction, they will be placed at the L2 point of Lagrange. Lagrange points are regions in space around the sun associated with a planet where objects entering can stay because there is a gravitational balance between the sun and a celestial body. Each planet has five associated Lagrange points, and they are usually essential for the fuel saving of space missions since a ship can stay in those regions with hardly any work. The L2 point associated with Earth is located 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth in the opposite direction to the Sun. This will grant permanent communication with the telescope and will allow maintaining its parasols pointing at the Sun at all times so that solar radiation does not interfere with the telescope systems. All this will ensure that James Webb can observe without interruption 24 hours a day keeping its temperature below 50 degrees Kelvin and giving us the most impressive images of the universe. The only problem with placing the telescope in this region is that there is no possibility of repairing it in case of a failure or breakdown, as happened with the Hubble telescope. Hubble is located 550 kilometers from Earth. Years after being put into orbit, different human crewed missions were carried out to make adjustments and update the telescope's vital systems for it to function correctly. The James Webb will be 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth, more than double the distance to which the Moon is. If there is a failure or breakdown, everything is over. There is no possibility of sending any human crewed mission to fix it. That is why NASA engineers are making their maximum effort so that this does not happen. Everything must be perfect. James Webb Instruments The telescope will be composed of three main parts the optical lens and the thermal parasol of which we have already talked, and finally, the Integrated Scientific Instruments module, ISIM. James Webb's measuring and observation instruments will be contained within the ISIM, which is the most critical payload. This is where the following four instruments were placed. Near-Infrared Camera NIR Cam the Near-Infrared Camera NIR -CAM, is a near-infrared radiation detection camera that will measure infrared wavelengths from 0.6 to 5 micrometers and be James Webb's main imager. With the NIR -CAM, we will be able to detect the first stars and galaxies that formed in the universe, details in the stars of galaxies near the Milky Way and the objects in the Kuiper Belt. In addition, NIR CAM will be equipped with coronagraphs, instruments that allow astronomers to take pictures of very faint objects around a bright central entity, such as star systems close to our own, and thus determine if there are planets on them. Near Infrared Spectrograph NIR -SPEC. The Near Infrared Spectrograph NIR -SPEC, will be the instrument in charge of analyzing the spectrum of the most distant objects and informing us about their physical properties including temperature, mass, and chemical composition. The atoms and molecules in celestial bodies print lines in their light spectrum uniquely. Each chemical element has a signature like a fingerprint. That is to say that just by analyzing the light coming from the celestial bodies, we can know what they are made of. The NIR spec will provide us with a wealth of information about exoplanets' physical and chemical conditions that could have liquid water and possibly extraterrestrial life. Mid-Infrared Instrument MIRI. The Mid-Infrared Instrument MIRI, consists of a camera and a spectrograph that sees the light in the mid-infrared region. MIRI will cover the wavelength range of 5 to 28 micrometers, 
its sensitive detectors will allow it to see red running light from distant galaxies, newly formed stars, and faintly visible comets, as well as objects in the Kuiper Belt. In addition, it will provide wide-field broadband images, that is, the same images that the Hubble telescope is already capable of taking, but much sharper and brighter, which is why the James Webb is considered to be the successor to Hubble. Fine Guidance Sensor, Near Infrared Imager, and Slitless Spectrograph, FGS, NIRISS. The Fine Orientation Sensor, FGS, will keep James Webb aiming precisely at its targets 24 7 so that it gets high quality images. This artifact will be of vital importance since one of the primary missions of James Webb is to photograph the light of the most distant objects before the universe. To achieve this, it must remain hundreds of days focused on the same thing without interruptions. In addition, the FGS, NIRISS, Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph will be used to investigate the detection of the universe's first light, detect and characterize exoplanets, and perform spectroscopy of exoplanet transit in stars near and far. Why is the James Webb Telescope so important? So far, the most powerful space telescope in existence is the Hubble Space Telescope. Thanks to the Hubble Telescope, we discovered the first exoplanets, a fantastic variety of planetary nebulae, and star clusters, the frequency with which supernovae occur, as well as the immense number of galaxies in the universe. One of the most impressive images provided by Hubble was Hubble's Deep Field, an image that was obtained after Hubble pointed you to a seemingly empty and dark region of the sky for 10 days. The resulting image helped us understand the vastness of the universe, for at that little point in the seemingly empty sky were hundreds of thousands of entire galaxies, each with its stars, planets, and perhaps also life. The new James Webb Telescope could bring us the subsequent revelation of the universe. We do not know well what it could be. Could it be that we finally find living beings on other planets? Or maybe we discover the origin of the first galaxy or the first star in the universe? Some scientists are betting that maybe we will find new planets in our solar system. The James Webb opens the beginning of a new era of space observatories, in which we can see what was always hidden from our sight. We will get to see events that occurred at the beginning of the universe just 100 million years after the Big Bang. And perhaps the true origin of our universe will be revealed to us.